Amen. Thank you for your labor, Chuck. So we have a Labor Day weekend prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray that you would anoint us with your strength, your fortitude. Give us the courage that in our deeds and our working, we'll have a tremendous faith and trust in your presence. Sharing your good news, your word of promise and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the one who welcomes us with an open heart, God, our comforter. Like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes us righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all our sins. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence. Make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the entire world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for sacred scripture. Thank you.
The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 35, beginning with the fourth verse. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not be afraid. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. Here ends the first lesson. Thanks be to God. The Psalter reading is from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. By the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. The second lesson is from James, second chapter, starting at the first verse. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritisms, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become, become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sister, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blast me the excellent name that has invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Have faith saved you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So by faith itself, if it has no work, is dead. Here ends the second lesson. Thanks be to God. Our Gospels from the seventh chapter of Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyree. He entered a house and did not 
want anyone to know he was there. Yet, Jesus could not escape notice. But a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. She came and bowed down at Jesus' feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus spoke to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had been had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Kids of all ages, we can interact just as we are. <laughs> Come on up. Any kids are welcome. All kids are welcome. Have you guys ever been hurt? Yeah. Did you ever get a scrape? So what do you do when you have a scrape? Like your skin or something. A cut. What do you do? A band-aid maybe? Right. We go to the hospital. Right? Mom and dad help us out. So there's all kinds of ways in which we need healing. Hmm? Have you been healed? Yeah, me too. Shall we thank the Lord for God's healing care? Thank you, Jesus, for healing us so that we can share your word of promise. Amen. Thanks for helping out. I was struck by the irony of Jesus saying, don't tell anyone, and everybody took that as an opportunity to speak more zealously that Jesus is healing people. Have you ever been at a store and all you wanted to do was get in and out? And that's the very time when something happens. So I was in a store, trying not to be noticed, trying not to take any time. And wouldn't you know, the cashier says, how you doing today? I said, I'm hanging in there. How about you? How are you doing? She says, today, I'm doing all right. Well, now that just is a loaded and nobody was around. So of course we have to get into that, right? What do you mean? Well, yesterday, I lost my best friend. <laughs> you can't just have a transaction and just pretend that the person's not a person. 
But today, the Lord woke me up and gave me today. And look how beautiful, it was a beautiful day that morning. I said, I noticed how crisp and clear the air was this morning. And she said, exactly. And it struck her when she woke up that the Lord is sending some healing. And she said, I think my best friend has given me a message to get up and to praise God. And I said, how can you doubt it? You know, so many different ways, so many different times that God is reaching out to us to heal us. Because God knows that we're broken. God knows that we're grieving. God knows that we're hurt. Physically, mentally, emotionally. And it's God's nature. And it's the nature of God's creation to promote healing. So we were getting into all this right at the cash register. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Isaiah text reminds us that the drought, the dreariness, the hurt, the poverty, the brokenness, death is real. We can't can't escape it or dress it up and pretend that it's less painful than it is. And when you see a brother or sister and they're struggling, if God gives you the vision to be able to see that or gives you the ears to be able to hear that, how awesome it is to be a child in God's creation and be a part of that healing message. To just listen. Show some compassion in the time we spend. Isn't that awesome? Now you and I have been called by God to cover, to blanket God's creation on what little part we're in with the healing nature of God's very presence. To remind brother and sister, God is here. God is saving. God is healing. Every band-aid, every neosporin, every limb that is mended, put in a cast, every surgery, every operation, Every hurt. Kathy just commented that my tail grew back because it got pulled off a couple months ago. It's amazing. It's natural in God's creation that healing is promoted. And we, my friends, are called by name and healed so as to give that message to someone else. It's astounding. I was at a wedding last night. And this fella, I, he was a stranger to me. We just started talking. And I said somebody just bumped into the car and there was a little dent in it and I didn't say anything. I said normally I would have went off. <laughs> I'd have been really mad. And I'd have started yelling. And I don't know why I didn't. It wasn't my idea. (laughs) All I did is went to the lady and she was befuddled and beside herself I said, peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. We're okay. It didn't do anything really. You know, a little scrape. It's okay. But don't you, no, we're good. We're good. Just God bless you. He said, yeah, that's funny you should say that. Because my wife and I were in the car, and we were at a stop sign, and somebody rear-ended us. And the first thing we did was look at each other. And we were okay. Then I got out, and there wasn't any damage to the cars, but we didn't know that. And the person who hit us was really upset, 
And it was all I could do just to reassure them that we were fine and it's okay. And just to, just to relax, just to breathe. And then we prayed together. This man is telling me. They prayed together right there at the, at the stop sign where he was rear-ended. And there was a peace. There was a healing. There was a renewal in that moment. That's what he shared with me. And that's God's living presence. God's alive. God is here. And to surrender to the powers and the influences that deny God and deny God's healing in the moments of hurt, that seems to be very popular. So embrace as we are being embraced that this is God's creation and we are here and he is healing us so that we can heal others with a word of life, a word of kindness and gentleness, a word of promise in the midst of accidents, in the midst of torture, in the midst of pain. And know that it is on your lips, just like the Psalm 146 that Cheryl shared with us. On your lips from beginning to end and everywhere in between is praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And just keep on praising the Lord. Very practical ways. Very real ways. Without discrimination. That James text. That we are equal members in the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters. To say, I don't want to interact with that person because I don't like them. Or they look different, and so I'm going to shun them. Or I don't know that person, so I'm not going to give them the time of day. That's quite the opposite of the church of Jesus Christ. The church which is being built up by the blessings and the healing, the word of God that's going out to each and every one of us throughout God's creation. That word is covering each and every one equally for us to accept that word of healing and then to deny a word of kindness just because is evil. Evil. So when I hear Jesus being approached by a woman an outsider, if you will. Most of the people that were seeking him were Jewish. Remember, he would go to the synagogues. He's Jewish himself. And so the Gentiles, the outsiders, weren't really in his mission field at the time. But this outsider came to him, begged him at his feet for healing. For her daughter. And would not take no for an answer. Because desperate people will not take no for an answer. Are you desperate enough? Are you hungry enough for the healing of Jesus Christ that he has to deliver us? To deliver your daughter. Your loved one. Hold on to the feet of Jesus Christ as we beg. Might be rejected time and time again, but we will not give up. It'll make us more zealous, more intense in our pleading and our activity of sharing the promise of God's word. God's living and sacred promise. The obstacle is too great. The deformity is too much. The impediments to speech and hearing, there's just no way to overcome them. And then Jesus Christ promotes and brings healing. I pray that each and every one of you 
will experience that kind of healing in the life of a brother, a sister, a neighbor, a stranger. And here is an opportunity. We've been called upon to cover two zones of Rochester. And back there on the easel is what the zones look like. What do we do? Well, everybody is invited to receive the word of God and to carry this word of God to your neighbors. Knock on the door. I am Greg from Grace in Rochester. Will you pray with me? Can I pray for you? Is there something we can pray together? Right there at the doorstep, pray with your neighbor. It was great to meet you. God bless you. Next door. If somebody's not there, we have a palm cross that supports a community in Africa so that they can live a good life. We have a bookmark with inspirational Bible verses. You just hang it on their doorknob if nobody answers and offer a prayer for those in the house. Why? Because God has healed us. Because the word of God has found us. We beg Jesus to hear our prayers and he listens. And so we take that word of promise and life to our neighbor. Saturate Rochester. Join some of your brothers and sisters in other churches this Tuesday, 7 p.m., September 7th, 7 p.m., down at the Circle in Rochester. We're going to pray about it. We're going to pray about this endeavor to carry the word, a word of promise, without discrimination to everyone in Rochester. You might be scratching your head saying, my middle name is Jonah. Why should I respond? That's not something I do. That's not something I've tried. Why not? It's a simple, it's an easy way to praise God. We receive the word of life. We share the word of life and a promise and a prayer. If you find yourself outside the house and you're overwhelmed with the needs of the brother or sister that you just prayed with, write them down on a piece of paper. Share them with me. Share them with a friend and meet those needs because it's faith and works together. They're win. For the healing, for the celebration and praising of God Almighty. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all people in need. Gracious Lord, as children of your promise, empower us to share this word of promise and to receive others' testimonies. Bind us together, Lord, with those in the midst of being healed, those who have experienced healing, and especially Darlene, Jim, Rick, Brian, Chick, Dorothy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship, enliven your church, guide us as we receive this good news and go out and share it for your glory. Help us to seek and to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all people. Encourage leaders to seek the common good, especially as we celebrate Labor Day and Labor Day weekend. Bless those who are offering a service on behalf of someone else. Strengthen them, Lord, in their devotion to you. Renew them by your promise. As you unite us in seeking the health, the safety, and the dignity of all, Lord, in your mercy, you support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture leaders and ministers in this congregation all kinds of jobs, all kinds of functions, all kinds of words that promote healing. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving at this time. And we lift to the church triumphant, John and Jean and Eva Joe and Myron. Pray that you would surround their families with your comfort and all those in need of care. We pray that you be with those who are celebrating, especially the newlyweds, Corey and Chrissy. Embrace them and bring their families together in a way that promotes your good news. You embrace all who have died in faith and brought them into your glorious presence. So we thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts, known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
Let us pray together. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took the bread, gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me, the body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. People of God, we are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless us now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in us.